Welcome everyone to another Forex Alchemist Expert Guide. I'm David and I'm going to be playing the Horatio today. So we have our standard endless difficulty, 10 competitors, all that jazz. If you've seen any of our other videos, it's all pretty much the same. Uh, the only difference is that since a recent patch, the Unfallen have been fixed. And I think they are by far the strongest race. Um, so we're using two of them as AIs just to make the game a little bit more competitive. Um, other than that, we've turned off the economic victory condition, but since we're only going to be playing the first 30 turns, it's highly unlikely we're going to be running into any of that anyways. Um, so let's get into the game. So if you haven't played Horatio before, their main, uh, their core mechanic is called gene splicing, where they need, they assimilate the characteristics of a different race, be it a, a major race or a minor race, and they get some of the benefits uh, of those races. For example, the Lumeris gain plus one dust and then plus three dust uh, on fertile planets. And if you assimilate the genes of the Lumeris, all of your Horatio start generating three dust, no matter what. Um, and so that can really give them a good snowball. Um, by the end of the game, your each of your Horatio population are going to be giving tons and tons and tons of extra fids. Um, however, I still, I'm of the opinion that the Horatio are by far the weakest race, simply because their early game is such crap. It's horrible. Um, so, and I can tell you why here. Uh, so their only, uh, real advantage that they get from their empire traits are these crowded planets. You just get one extra population slot on planets. The content citizens and the perfect genes are okay, but not that great. But they get these this huge problem of plus 25% industry cost on ships, um, which is horrible. And they start with two not very good places, off-world agribusiness, so you can get happiness and talk to uh, minor sieves early, really not that big of a deal, not that, uh, not that good and then rare earth foams, which gives you Mediterranean colonization. And that brings up the second aspect. They start on a Mediterranean. They're the only organic race that doesn't start on either a fertile or a temperate planet, or a temperate fertile planet, basically. Um, so they cannot use um, the xeno-industrial infrastructure, which, if you've seen our other videos, is the core to a successful early game. So they can't use that, all of their stuff is more expensive. And on top of all of that, their ships have one le one or two less slots uh, than any, any other race. So not only are their ships 25% more, 25 more expensive, but they're also significantly weaker, like significantly weaker to the point where you can't do early aggression. Um, not only can you not maintain the battle just because you can't put pump out ships as faster as fast as any of the other races, but also your ships are just weaker. So no matter what, you're going to lose early aggression. And unfortunately, this trend continues all the way to the late game. So unfortunately, you're just going to lose aggression. Horatio really cannot realistically fight um, ever in the game because of that. Their the what their one advantage is that. They get tons and tons of flexibility, meaning their slots are never or very rarely just weapon or just defense. They'll get defense or and support or weapon and support and that type of thing. So you can make you can do a whole bunch of really cool things with their ships, but it doesn't really make up for just the sheer lack of power behind them. Anyways, so let's get into the game. Um, since, as I mentioned, you can't do. Um, early uh the early xeno you know, industrial infrastructure and we start on a mediterranean uh we're actually going to be uh prioritizing food and specifically the sustainable farms which is going to give us 15 extra food on our starting from our starting planet and the reason for that is that mediterraneans have a base output of six industry which isn't that bad um it's not as good as a jungle but it's okay Really, we just want to populate this as quickly as possible, get that industry up uh, just from raw population. Um, all right, and our the other advantage that they have is that they have these really sweet revealers. 
uh, that can hold one um, one engine slot and three scout slots. Uh, so here, I can show you what I meant by these uh, this versatility. So normally, a, a uh, an explorer ship would have like three um, three support modules and maybe a weapon module or whatever. The uh, but but usually about five module slots. The uh, the Horatio only have four module slots, but they'll they have a blank slot which can be anything, two defense and or support uh, slots, and then one only support slot. So these guys can be really versatile. And what I like to do at the beginning of the game is give them an engine and then three um, three uh, probes, which gives them not only seven movement speed, but also six probes, which is really strong. They have the best scouting ships in the game, even better than the Lumeris. Um, that, in addition to that, we uh, their hero starts with the uh, starts with the ability to give all of your uh, your fleet plus two movement speed. So he's going to be zipping around really quickly. So what we're going to and so we have a revealer. He it starts with four probes and six movement speed, and but our hero only starts with four movement speed and no probes. So we could upgrade our revealer, but I, it's actually more efficient and better to upgrade the hero himself. So what we're going to do is we're going to give him an obsolete motor to bump him up to six, match the uh, the uh, the revealer ship. And, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, so let's reset the design. Um, we're going to match the revealer ship at six movement speed so we don't waste any extra gold. And we're going to give him some probes. This is going to still bump up our, um, our fleet to a total of six probes, but it's gonna have eight movement speed. And since there are two ships that are going to be recovering probes each turn, you're actually gonna get two probes per turn. And in this way, you, these guys are some of the best scouts in the game. They're pretty incredible. And you use about the same amount of gold as you would if you just did the, uh, the probe reset where you scouted and then reset and then scouted again. So I, in the long term, it's probably better. I think it's better. I like, it. I like doing it this way. All right, so we're going to scout our first two places. Sweet, we found some Jade Onyx. Um, we are going to send our probes this way and that way because we see this is probably a minor sieve up here, which we want to start getting. Damn it, it switches every time, and I fail to remember every time that, it's, that it switches like that. Excuse me. Uh, it looks like they don't have any curiosities, anyways. Mm, that sucks. Uh, we're still going to go up here with these guys. Um, they can hang out there for now, uh, it's not a big deal. Um, anyway, so we're going to, uh, as usual, if you don't build the Xeno Industrial Plant early, almost always start with a, uh, another scout ship. So we're going to do the same, uh, our really, really awesome scout ships. Um, the other thing, uh, since they fixed the happiness, the empire-wide happiness th uh, bonuses, the plus 15% dust and science for happy empires, just like almost every other race, always start with Toys for Boys because the 10% science penalty just gets overcome by the plus 15% for being happy. Okay, um, I think that's about it for the first turn. Uh, yeah. I forget anything? No, I don't think so. Um, oh, I can show you what I meant by the gene splicing here. So we start with a, Zivwal a Zivali population that give plus three science, but oh, that's the other thing. You also get plus three science from your starting Zivali uh, population from doing Toys for Boys. So you can see that the Zivali give plus three science and plus two happiness. Um, but if we assimilated them, then all of our Horatio gained the effects of plus two science and plus one happiness. So that can really snowball if you have, say, like 200 Horatio, that gives you plus 400 science and plus uh, 200 happiness. So it can be pretty strong in the late game. Um, but in this early game, the population themselves are actually going to be much stronger. So we're going to be very careful about how and when we, uh, we assimilate races. 
All right, and he can just hang out there. Um, there are three exits to that place, so we're just going to uh, to let it do its thing. Okay, so we also want to be scouting extensively. Um, damn it, I did it again. <laughs> um, we also want to be scouting extensively. So the uh, the Horatius start as ecologists, which means that they can pop, they can colonize any planet, regardless of if you need the tech to do it. This is a bad example because it's an ocean, um, except for gas giants, which gives them a lot of flexibility on where they start their colonies. However, if you don't have the uh, the technology in order to do it, so you can see that we can colonize any of these, even without the techs. But if you do, then you get a 50% FIDS reduction on the base output of the planet. So say we colonize this lava here that normally gives 316.2, we would actually only be getting 181. So it's really, it really slows down your, uh, your early expansion if you just colonize every system that you can find. Um, what I like to use the ecologist perks for are going from your first planet, which you should always look for tier zeros and tier ones, and expanding that out into um, your second and third planet of that system. So we're still looking for tier zeros and tier ones, which we have only found one of, which is okay. Um, and then after that, and then, and then using utilizing your ecologist perk after that. So, um, yes. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, as I said, the, uh, the Horatio's early game is pretty weak. So if we run into someone early, uh, we might be in some trouble because the Horatio have a very, very hard time defending themselves. All right, so this is, yeah, again, these are pretty lame early games. So we're just going to blow through these turns pretty quickly. I don't have that much to talk about until we get here. Okay, so the Horatio quest is pretty interesting. Um, it has three distinct arms. The ecologist arm, the religious or influence arm here. So the ecologist arm gives buildings that give food. The... Lug the religious arm gives influence buildings, and then the industrialist power uh, arm gives industry buildings. And this kind of split, so your first choice really splits the, uh, the quests into these three pretty distinct paths. And I mapped them out so that they would be a little bit, so I could talk about this, so I'm going to just switch over here real quick. So you can see, so here's chapter one. We have the ecologist, the industrialist, and the religious choices. And after you pick those, you're locked in for your chapter two choice. And so, you, so basically you get either plus to food, industry, or influence. And in the chapter two, if you pick the religious or um, ecologist, you get an outpost and a hero named Five, uh, which is pretty good. He's a guardian Horatio. But if you pick industrialist, you get the plus 25 industry on all systems, which is kind of like Thinkers and tink the Thinkers and Tinkers uh, minor sieve perk, but it just start it's just a flat 25 on all of your systems. So that's really, really good in the early game. And it's not that hard to get. So as you can see, these gold arrows are actually the, uh, the path I like to go. Mostly because the Horatio have a huge problem with industry. That they don't that uh, they don't get any base industry from uh, from their people, their, their population, they don't get the advantage of xeno-industrial plants on their home system. You know, they have a really big problem with industry, so we're going to try and supplement that by using their quest. So we're going to swap back over to this, um, and we're going to select power, which means we have to build five ships of at least 59 defensive power, and then what happens next is that it spawns two fleets of enemy Horatio that we have to kill. All right. So we're going to get here. And you see that even from here to here, we got four pros back. So we can do all of this nice scouting. I guess there are only two here anyways. But you can see what I mean. If, if we were able to find more, uh, more 
systems than we would be able, or more curiosities than we'd be able to do extra scouting. And extra scouting means more experience. Uh, and it's more experience to the point where actually, so if you've looked at the Horatio abilities, they're not that impressive. You know, it's some 5% five, 5 extra food and 5% happiness, plus to food on fertile, but we don't have any fertiles, and then the standard food and industry. So these tier one abilities are really not that impressive, especially the, uh, the percentage uh, food in the early game. So he's actually going to be getting more experience and being more useful if we just keep him in this scout fleet uh, for the early game. And so that's exactly what we're going to do. Not only will he be getting more experience, but he's giving us more probes and more speed and all that good stuff. Um, so we're just going to be zipping around with him uh, doing our exploration thing. Uh, another really important thing is obviously you want to assimilate as many minor sieves as you can to get your gene pool, your uh, gene specimens going. You want to be collecting them as much as possible so that you can start growing up those populations to be ready to be assimilated um, when you have the, the excess population to support it. All right, so we have one extra turn before planetary landscaping. So I think we're just going to start on our next beautifier. No. First of all, as with all races, you want to upgrade your beautifier speed. Like that. Let it zoom around. I think we're going to do cerebral reality. Because yet another problem that the, uh, the Horatio have is science. Since they can't take full advantage of public-private partnerships or any of that jazz, um, they really suffer with early and mid-game science. Fortunately, we found that, uh, that ocean which is going to be our first place. So we're actually going to grab Xenobiology anyways, but normally if you didn't find a tier zero or a good uh, good Savannah or whatever, um, you wouldn't be able to take advantage of it and you'll never be able to take advantage of it in your home system unless again, you start with a tier zero planet. But you should never have to count on that since it's, you know, it's random. Um, okay, so we got three more here. We have a nice Terran over here which could be good, it has some nice uh, jade onyx. And the best possible thing for us ever is we get uh, these exiles, these foreign population. It sucks because these guys are terrible, um, plus five um, manpower per turn, Ooh. but but no, hope, usually, or hopefully when you get these guys, it will be they'll have some useful stat that again, you can start growing up that population and then be ready to assimilate it. Um, later on in the game. All right, so we're going to just keep exploring with these guys. Um, this guy's on his way down. And I think that should be it. Uh, I think we praised this guy. Yep. Um, yeah, I guess, so we, we're producing seven influence per turn, which isn't horrible. Um, I'm not sure how we're producing seven influence per turn. Because it says we're producing zero. Oh yeah, here we go. Five from... Oh, because we're a little bit happy and uh, the Galactic Age. Yeah. So the other another problem, I should, should say, that the uh, Horatio have is that they don't have any good way to produce influence. Um, but they are super dependent on it because they have to uh, be assimilating minor sieves to take advantage of their core mechanic, the gene splicing thing. Um, so we're also going to be rushing uh, Xenology relatively quickly to get these spin projects. Um, it really depends on what else we need at the time. Um, since we haven't found any other major sieves, there's not going to be too much aggression against us, uh, at least super early. If there was, um, we would be starting, or we would be getting um, efficient shielding, the, com the basic fleet hulls, the basic military hulls, next as our third uh, our third tech because our we can't do the Cravers or the United Empire or the Lumeris thing where you get your you turn your uh, your little uh, exploration ships into actual early combat fighters. The, our ships are just too expensive, too and too weak to make that even a viable strategy. 
Um, so we're going to hope that we don't run into too many baddies before that time, and we can just kind of survive doing this. All right, so let's explore this. Hopefully this is titanium. I'd really like it to be. Perfect. So we got our titanium, um, and then we're, so we're going to get uh, public-private partnerships and then xenolinguistics, kind of the opposite order, but we really need the science, actually. We're kind of hurting without it at the moment. Um, yeah, and this place, this ocean should be able to sustain itself at least decently. Yeah, unfortunately, it's tiny and the only thing in the system. So we haven't been able to take, this isn't a, this is, I won't say it's a bad start by any means, but it's certainly not a good start um, for these guys. Let's see, yeah. So we have some good titanium and hyperium over here. Um, which might make it worthwhile. Uh, we'll definitely call it, as soon as this starts filling up, we'll definitely colonize this, no question. But we just don't really need it at the moment. Um, so as I, I forgot to do it last turn, but we're gonna switch over to sustainable farms as quickly as we can. And we're going to colonize this place, I think. Ooh, unless this place is even better. We got a tiny jungle with some lots and lots of good places. I think we're going to do this place first, actually, to hopefully we can get this done, colon uh, done colonizing by the time we get our next beautifier, our next colony ship built and over there. Uh, speaking of which, we're going to put that in next. So that's going to take 10 turns to build. This place will probably take, so it says 12, but it'll probably take eight with, uh, with these supply ships. So yeah, that should be fine. We might uh, let it build for a little while, let the uh, sustainable farms build for a little while and then switch over and then get that guy over here as quickly as possible. Because we don't, we definitely don't want anyone else to take this place. Oh, excuse me, my eyes are changing. All right, so we got a ton of jade onyx and blue cat mold. That's cool. Um, and we just got 50 extra influence, which is grand. All right, what else? Yeah, the, the cool thing about these guys is that they really can explore every curiosity that they find. They just have so many probes all the time that it's really never an issue of running out of, uh, running out of probes. Okay. So yeah, again, the extra population is not only good for the gene splicing, but since our industry is population reliant, it's really good. Another reason why more probes and more exploration is essential. Okay. Um, so yeah, we're going to keep working on that. I think that should be fine. And then after we get xenolinguistics, we definitely have to get efficient shielding just to protect ourselves from pirates. Um, who, you know, the basic pirate ships are even more powerful than our, uh, our exploration ships. Okay, we got a tundra down here, but not a very good system otherwise. We got another Zivali. Again, not the greatest. Well, I'll always take the extra population, but you want it to be population that you don't already have. So that's kind of unfortunate. We got kind of the two worst ones, uh, in all honesty. Uh, but that's okay. We will power through. All right. Um, we're going to have him hang out. He doesn't have movement speed anyways. Grab that last curiosity, because you can see he got two probes this turn, which is just cool. That's like double experience, if you can use them, of course. But you have eight movement speed to jump around, so he's more likely to get it anyways. And you can see it's turn 11, uh, so I could move him back to my system if I wanted to, but I really just don't see the point. Uh, at best, I could give him like plus 10% food and 10 happiness. So plus 10% food is like what? Seven, eight, eight food? Or I could get the plus 10 from uh, just the other one. So yes, yeah, so the best I could do is give him plus 10 food. whoop de doo Not even a little bit excited about that. Um, so we're just going to keep exploring with them, get that, uh, get that exploration experience and extra probes. Uh, and then, you know, I can always pull them back at any time if I might do it next turn. 
uh, to get that experience from uh, from so not this turn but next turn grab that experience from finishing that to optimize a little bit. All right, so we have the rift born there, and what do we have here? We have a small ice gas giant. All right, so let's uh, send out these probes real quick. And then I'm going to have him sit there, but we're probably going to uh, pull him back next turn. Um, as I said, to get that experience from finishing the sustainable farms, you can see he's already level four, which is pretty, pretty good to be at level 12. Um, yeah, but other than that, I don't think there's really that much left to do. Uh, we're still working on these. And so after this, we're going to want public-private partnerships. Um, oh, I just realized that my game sounds are coming through my speakers and not my headphones. Let me fix that real quick. Um, maybe you guys can then hear these game sounds. Okay, so that should fix this. Okay, sorry about that. Um, I think you could still hear me though. When I rewatch this video, if you can't, well then that gives me an opportunity to to uh, get a little bit better start. <laughs> okay, here we go. More of this. We have another tiny jungle down here. Wow, this is actually a pretty good spot for uh, for the uh, Riftborn to start with lots of hot planets right next to them. All right, so we're gonna send out our last probe. Mm, no, that's not even necessary. All right, we're just gonna pull them back. Put them in here. And let's see, we are going to level up the food and industry and the percentage uh, food. Because I know we could get 20 food from here, but that's just not going to scale as well as, as this one. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's the right choice early in the game. I haven't really decided yet. Uh, okay, so we could build our guy in four turns. This is done in six minus one. I'd rather have the extra the extra food this turn. Um, and then what we're going to do is grab this, then this, and this, and then science. Um, okay, so this guy can then be on his way. Oh, they already closed orders with me? Those bastards. <laughs> uh, that's a dick move. Uh, okay, I guess we'll just continue on. To Geist. What's this? Shadow. Okay, so this guy really can't go any further, unfortunately. So I guess we'll just have him backtrack and pick up some of these curiosities that we uh, that we left behind. Hopefully we missed something good. Right, let's keep just praising these guys up. Normally you'd want to wait for the first uh, praise to, uh, to wear off, but I was a little impatient. Oh right, yeah, so, so you can see that that, um, that supply ship bumped it down from six to three. So we, uh, it's pretty good. Okay, so we reached here already. How's this guy doing? 75 turns with us sitting on his face. So we can just hang out there for a little bit. We don't, remember, we don't have any guns on our, uh, on our exploration ships. Okay, um, so we're almost done with Xenolinguistics, and then Efficient Shielding, and then after that we're going to want uh, a Xenology in order to get that, uh, that extra influence. Okay, and we are getting to the center of the galaxy. Yeah, so we're getting to the center of the galaxy, which means we're going to be meeting lots of minor sieves. And we're going to want to praise and get all of them. And that's why we're rushing that early influence. Because the more minor sieves we can get, the better. 
Okay, and that's the end of our constellation. So there's only two of us on here. Interesting. Unless it kind of continues. No, because I think it dead ends over there as well. All right, so that's interesting. Um, he already has four colonies down, or four outposts down, which is pretty scary. Uh, we got our beautifier and some linguistics. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, again, pretty short turns. Um, they don't really have that much to do. I always joke that uh, Horatio feel like uh, galactic farm consultants because you're not because you're kind of just like growing foreign populations and then you just don't really do that much uh, unfortunately so we're gonna be uh be consulting on their farming habits <laughs> all right we got some more of these new uh neutron stars which would be really cool if they were near us but they're not it uh, looks like we got a hint of another minor sieve up there, so we'll probably send a probe that direction um, at some point. Let's see, what else? I think there was a... Oh, cool, we just covered the Academy and the Hisho. Okay, so I think there was a pirate fleet coming down towards Liesel. So hopefully we can just kind of... Nope, we're not going to make it there in time. They might catch us, which would suck. All right, and as planned, we finished the Xeno uh, Industrial Infrastructure right as this one finished. So we're gonna grab that, and then Public-Private Partnerships, and then Cerebral Reality. And we really don't need to get any food because there's only one planet here, and it's an ocean, so it's already outputting tons of food. Uh, so this is gonna grow up and, and fill this population all by itself without any help us. Alright, after that, after these guys, um, since we're not at a uh, kind of an ex existential threat at the moment, we're definitely going to want to get um, our tier 1 or our tier 2 system development because we want to get uh, start using our Jadonics. And our Jadonics is really going to help offset our early uh, industry problems, or at least help to offset our early industry problems. All right, and so yeah, you can see that um, each different race has these, uh, just their normal traits, and so you really want to kind of cherry pick which ones you're contacting and, and spending your early influence on. So we really don't care about manpower, so the Hisho are very low priority list for us. But these guys, the Buga, Bagaba, the Bagaba, uh, get plus two influence. So these guys are really good, and we totally want to to prioritize them. Same thing with the Eider, who get lots of dust. So that's going to really help shore up our some of our weaknesses. Um, the other problem with Horatio is that being a population-based civilization. Um, the, all of the benefits that they get are really outshadowed or outshined by uh, buildings that any build. So uh, remember the, the circumstance or the, the hypothetical that I talked about earlier. If you have 200 um, Horatio population and you then you uh, assimilate the Zvali, then you'll get an additional 400 science at the cost of, you know, uh, so it's your first assimilation costs two population, then four, then six, then eight, then ten, then twelve, and so on. So at that point, when you have two hundred ratio, it might cost you twelve population or even more um, to assimilate those Zavali. And at that point in the game, those Zavali, if you have any of the science buildings that give you science per population or plus to happiness or plus percentage science or whatever those 12 Zivali probably produce more science than the 400 that you're just getting from uh, from assimilating them into your Horatio culture or your Horatio genome. And so it's almost, I mean, it's a really, really cool mechanic, but this game is just not built around being population centric. Uh, it's much more 
building and industry centric. Food is a very is of very low value, and that's kind of what they specialize in. Um, and that's another point that I want to bring up is that very few minor sieves give industry. I think there's only two. One of them are like the anti sophons, the hot sophons that give plus two industry when you assimilate them, and the other one is like the uh, the pseudo um, robot guys that give plus one industry and then plus five food on sterile. Uh, so you end up, even if you get like the optimal, and then I guess you could get Riftborn, which give you three industry, I guess. And then if you assimilate Cravers, they just give give you plus 5% fids, which is really strong. But again, you can never really fight because you're so weak. And so trying to get a Craver civilization is really, 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 really hard um, to assimilate. Um, but yeah. Um, yeah, so they, they really just have problems with everything. That, that their, their population bonuses are so small in comparison to like a simple building. Uh, let, let's just take the, uh, the public-private partnerships that, and the uh, United Empire start where they, they start on a Terran. So that's 13 or that's the, just from that one planet, that one building, that's 30 science. In order to match that, you have to, for Horatio, you have to not only sacrifice some of your population, but you also have to have 15 Horatio. And so we're here on turn 19. The, uh, the United Empire would probably be finishing their public-private partnerships, or they've probably already had it finished. And I only have, what, four Horatio. So I would only be getting eight science from sacrificing two of my my population or sorry sac yeah some some bleh, from sacrificing two of my population so that trade-off is terrible since i'm going to emphasize it again your industry and all of your stuff is based on the number of people that you can get on this planet and so sacrificing population early is really just not an option and the benefits that you can get from it are also just not that great uh, and, and that's the reason that I think Horatio really needs some help. Um, there was a bug on, I think it was 1.0.15, where once you hit 50 Horatio population, if you're, they, they basically got the uh, bioreactor fuel, this tier 5 building here, where all of your food was converted to industry when your population of the system was maxed. And that kind of made them competitive and interesting. Uh, I actually really liked it. Um, it, it made, it made the, uh, the ratio potentially viable. I still think they were pretty weak, but I would have, you know, I played them and I had a good time and I was like, okay, you know, I might, if I played them a little bit more, I might be able to really, uh, leverage this, this mechanic and, and really do something cool. Because once you hit that 50 population point, then you became a, a, a mid game industry monster. But now they don't have that, just at all. They just completely removed it and didn't replace it with anything. Uh, so now we are weak as hell, which makes me sad because I really like this gene splicing mechanic and I love the uh, the idea of the Horatio. And I, I don't know, I think they're really fun. Uh, so we finished efficient shielding. So now we can get some fighters and stuff. And if you've seen any of my other videos, I love to make up my own names. Um, and for the uh, for the Horatio, who are very centric, and uh, the Horatio, the original, is uh, very egocentric. So I liked the idea of having the ship names be the Seven Deadly Sins. So we have our first fighter ships named Greed, and as you can see, they only have four slots. Um, again, compare that to Cravers that have five, United Empire that have six. You know, just Less slots, they're more versatile, but you know, if you're making a fighting ship, this can be a, an attack or defense. What do you freaking do? I mean, you're always going to want to put a, uh, a weapon module on that, but then they just get one less defense slot. So, honestly, they kind of suck. <laughs> um, we did get the improved beams, which can be useful in some cases. We're actually going to go a beam and some anti-missile 
defense, so we're going to do a beam and some slugs. And we're going to do lots of turtling and, and close range actions. Uh, and on top of that, we're also going to grab a shield. Um, shields can basically just, if I pull up the detailed stats, they give you a small health bonus that can that is uh, absorbs some damage. So it absorbs 11% of energy damage, but also absorbs a very small amount of... Uh, of projectile damage as well. So you can, you know, compare that to, say, armor plating, which just gives you straight up 9% reduction to uh, projectile damage. And so it's not that great. I would rather take this one. All right, so those are going to be our greed class ships. And then we're going to have our sloth class um, protector ships here. And again, you know, very versatile, but only four slots, so not that great. So they can only have the defense slots if you want to have them, you know, at all useful. And they don't have a space for, say, like a healing thing. Um, but what, so what we're sorry. So they can only have one defense slot and a healing thing, compared to both defense, the shield and the armor and a healing slot. So, so these guys are also just really weak, but. You know, this is what this is what we have to deal with. So again, we're going to go with the shield, and then uh, grab this healing slot because these guys are going to be taking a majority of the damage. So getting a post-battle heal is going to be really nice, uh, since you know our ships are so expensive as well. We don't want them dying constantly. Uh, so yeah, so that's what we're going to do, and then our fleet composition are ju is just going to be two of each: one greed sloth, greed sloth just in case we need to fight early. Um, no reason to put this guy over here yet, so we're just gonna keep everyone on Horatio Prime. Uh, and yes, next thing we're, on, we're going to want are, is uh, so after we build these ships, you can see they take three turns each, which is so long because they are 206 industry each, which is huge. Um, way more than, than any other race. So after we do those guys, we're going to get Xeno Industrial, just because, you know, the 20, the 20 industry is going to be nice. Like, it's a 25% boost for us, but, uh, but again, not great, because I mean, we even started with a nice Mediterranean in our place, which was pretty good, pretty lucky, but still just kind of, yeah, that's their start, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, okay, where are my other ships? There he is. Okay, so I just, I don't think that's, I think there's uh, nothing really much else to do. Oh, next, uh, horrible thing about Horatio is that they start with dictatorship. So it's nice because you can say, oh, well, I mean, I get to choose ecologists, but you don't get to build up any other, uh, influence on any other party. So when, so you're basically forced to switch government types as quickly as possible, which is a pretty, like, it's a tier three tech. Anyways, uh, I'll get to that in a second. Stick with ecologists. We're going to be wanting to expand our uh, our stuff as soon as possible, um, or keep expanding, settling more places uh, as as soon as possible. By the way, did I upgrade this? I think I did. What is your? Oh, no, I didn't. Okay. So um, yeah, so we have our democracy or our dictatorship, which means we only have one leading political party. So we're not gaining influence or gaining uh, experience for any of the other parties so that when eventually when we switch governments, uh, which is a tier three tech, if I remember correctly, right here, yep, once we get Xeno Anthropology, then we're not going to have any experience with those guys so we won't have access to the, uh, to the good laws that they offer. Um, so their their early government start is just also pretty terrible. They don't they have all of the penalties and uh, unfortunate um, the disadvantages of the Kraber's autocracy, but none of the benefits. So uh, oh, and they only get two uh, two law slots as opposed to the Kravers who get three. Okay, so. Um, Moving on. Oh, that's right. We saw the anti-Sophons. Here they are. These are the guys. Um, they give 
plus two industry if once you assimilate them. So these guys are super important. So we're actually going to be focusing these guys as much as possible. We're going to build up their reputa our reputation with them as quickly as we can and either assist them or just uh, buy them out with more, uh, more industry. All right. Um, okay. And I mean, whether or not we, uh, we get to keep this system, it doesn't really matter. All that matters is that we get those guys and eat them. Uh, or, and by eat them, I mean assimilate their genes. Okay, again, you can see that we have the opportunity to assimilate the Zavali, but just, I mean, what's it gonna do? It's gonna give us eight science for the cost of two people, not even close to worth it. So we're just gonna just to hang on to them um, for a while. The only time that it's actually worthwhile to assimilate a population is once you get you once you start getting like full planet like like full systems not just full planets but actually full systems um and if you have all of your places on one like all of those minor populations on one system and they're just kind of in the way then you can start assimilating um but other than that just the bonuses that the population give per planet so like for example each population on Horatio Prime gives six food, six industry, five dust, and three science. So why would you ever sacrifice two population giving you all of that stuff for like eight science and four happiness, like total throughout your empire? I don't know. It just, just that mechanic is so weak in the early game. It's just terrible and never, ever, ever do it. Uh, Cause you're just going to, uh, to considerably weaken yourself. All right, so we got some more curiosities. We're gonna make another attempt here. Hopefully there isn't another pirate fleet when we get there or else that guy's gonna die. Um, yeah, again, we're just kind of chugging through. Got our two places. Um, I'm actually gonna grab another beautifier before I do that because I kind of want to go... Was there another? We saw another Terran place, didn't we? Or was it? I think it was down here. Yeah, so we're gonna go, oh wait, this is a Tundra. Uh, there was a Terran place, wasn't there? Yeah, here it is. We're gonna go up and grab this Terran, which has a nice snow with it as well. Um, so then we'll have our nice kind of four core places, uh, which won't be bad. But yeah, turn 22, uh, let's do a little point check-in. You can see I am pretty, oh, I'm actually not in last. Um, I'm guessing ye whoever yellow is started next to one of the Cravers. Um, but I'm pretty, other than yellow, I'm pretty far down to all of the AIs, which if you've watched the Craver Guide or the United Empire Guide or the Lumeris Guide or the Riftborn Guide, we're all either, every time we're either ahead of or basically on par with the, uh, the top Craver or the top AIs, which admittedly are always Cravers. Um, so yeah, we're, uh, we're pretty weak. And if someone had, like, if the Cravers happen to be like right here, we would probably be dead by now. <laughs> Especially if, uh, you know, if I were playing the Cravers and I started here, or I mean, even if I started here, um, and I saw that the Horatio were up here, they are my number one first target every single time, just because they are so weak and they cannot do a sustained war. Their places are too expen. Their ships are too expensive, and their places produce too uh, little industry, in order to match my ship output. I, I can do like I could do a seventy five percent ship dedication where I you know like put you know build some ships and then I can build a building and then build more ships and then build a building. Um, and even if they did a hundred percent, even if the Horatio did, does a hundred percent ship production, they just can't match power. Um, so that's, you know, it's just one of the reasons that they're so weak. All right, we're going to keep grabbing this stuff. Um, it's doing okay. Again, not great. Yeah, hopefully, um, I was, or I shouldn't say hopefully, I talked to the one of the devs um, on the Games Together, the GOG uh, forums, and he said that he and some of the other devs had been talking about the Horatio and they agree that they are not in a good place at all. Like they're, they're really weak. 
Um, and he said that there are some buffs, or that they're working on some buffs um, that we can hope for them. Which is great, because as I said, Horatio are my second favorite race. I think I've actually put more time in trying to figure out Horatio and make them good than I have with the Cravers. Uh, which is saying something, because I've played a hell of a lot of Cravers and I freaking love them. But the Horatio just seemed like a wonderfully fun puzzle. And one that I've kind of copped out of, where I'm just like, you know, I think the answer to this puzzle is that there isn't one. Is that it's rigged and that the that these guys are just inherently weak. Alright, so we have to intercept a kidnapped vessel. Unfortunately, we just left here. So this is kind of like the Craver's Quest, where you just have to... Uh, set up a blockade and have this ship move into your blockade. Uh, oh, actually, these guys... This guy does have a gun, so he could do it. My normal uh, guys wouldn't be able to do it. Uh, set up a blockade. Because you can only set up a blockade when you have uh, weapons attached to your ships. Okay. So this is... Wow, this is all connected. Interesting. Um, okay. Okay. But again, we're, uh, we're kind of focusing our influence on building up these guys. So we really don't want to have to buy um, these guys out. In fact, um, we probably won't no matter what. See, so do they have development? No, they have, so they have selective migration. Uh, so once we get the, uh, the marketplace, we're probably just going to buy... 15 dust and then use selective migration to get these guys to get one of those populations to come to check uh, because if i remember correctly these guys only populate gas giants yeah so they do gas giants and i guess snow but they're not going to be very good and this system itself is not that great but from being friends with them they give me lots of dust and lots of science um yeah so they're a th just that uh that guy is like 30% of my science. You can see I'm getting more science from minor civilizations than I'm actually producing, even though I get the uh, the loyal plus 15% buff. Oh, I guess I'm losing 10% for Toys for Boys, but you see what I mean, that just my relationships with relationships with uh, minor civs are producing more science than my, uh, my whole civilization, which sucks. Okay, um, so let's grab some curiosities here. Make these guys like us a little bit. Some more Jade Onyx, some more Vision. And a thumbs down, set your face. All right, and we might get caught by that, um, by that pirate there. Um, but if I do, you know, whatever, he's, he's done his job, I mean, he, explore this entire arm and a lot of the center and then if we can go up this arm great if not kind of whatever right, so we're going to try and get him to go over there okay so we've arrived here we have oops all right turn 26 um yeah oh um i did i built my my ships and i didn't really talk about them very much i'm going to just go back to that real quick um, so you saw that we found the uh, improved beams. So you have basic plasma beams, which are your normal ones, but then we got the uh, basic pinch beams, which are considerably stronger. So 19 to 31, so considerably stronger. So it'd be a real shame not to use them. So we are we threw uh, we mixed our ships. We did one beam and one standard kinetic. One beam for its early damage, and one kinetic to give us a little bit of missile defense, since we're not using uh, hull plating as our defensive modules. So hopefully, since so in our fleet we'll have four kinetics, uh, four kinetic guns, because two from the sloths, two from the greeds, and that should give us at least decent missile protection. Um, and then, uh, well, if we can close in on them, we can also do some uh, some pretty heavy damage with our pinch beams. So that's just there, that little, uh, that little spiel. Let's see. Um, I guess I want you to, I, I'm gonna send him down here. If this guy comes up here, then we'll catch him there. If not, then we'll just kind of chase him down. 
All right. Anyways, uh, so also, um, so when we complete this quest, it's going to spawn two fleets of Horatio Prime ships, which are actually pretty strong. So we are going to want. Oh, awesome! So we got. So again, these events where you get um, new uh, new populations are incredibly good for Horatio. Again, not to <laughs> beat a uh, beat a dead horse, but you are population dependent for your industry and production. But also, you know, then you can start growing up those populations to be spliced later. Definitely, do, even though we have the option to splice them right away and getting the bonus happiness might be nice, but the people are just, the actual people are just more important 100% of the time. So just keep them there, splice them later if you, uh, if you have the freedom to do so. All right, so we're going to move our ships. All right, wow, there are so many pirates running around here. Uh, so we're just going to keep moving. Hopefully they won't catch us and kill us. Uh, this guy is ready for settlement. So we're going to grab this Terran. And we have decent money. We're actually producing quite a bit. Thanks to, our again, our minor sieves. Almost exclusively. Um, yeah, the one benefit that Horatio has is that since they produce so much food, we can actually maintain um, two outposts simultaneously without losing people. Uh, and that might be because I found those these two guys, or, my, or I guess I've gotten four additional population from quests and curiosities, but basically that was just a little quick calculation that I did. So each outpost drains 40% of your planet's food. So, you know, I just did a little calculation. Can my guys, is my consumption, which is 92.5, uh, is that more than 20% of my food production? The answer was no, so we're fine. All right. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna keep on doing this. I'm trying to think of what I want to do, if I can kind of talk about anything new or interesting uh, in these last couple turns. Um, and not really. So this is really kind of an optimal start, where we didn't have any aggression, no one really started close to us. Um, I played a game earlier that just to, you know, uh, brush up on my Horatio, I haven't played him in a while. And so I was here and then the Unfallen was like here. And I was able to kill their vine ship on turn eight, and so horribly, horribly crippled them, and then settled two places like here and here. And so I totally boxed them in, and they only had one city or one one system. But at turn twenty six, they had twenty one people in that single system, and were still the second port, point leader, like uh, second place in points. And even, I had six systems at, at that point. I was like turn 40-ish. Uh, and they declared war on me, obviously. So I was fighting them the whole time. Uh, but they had one system. I had six. So I was fighting them, fighting them, fighting them. And then when I went to try and invade them and take their remaining system, because it was amazing, I could not beat them. My seven, my seven CP ships versus their seven CP ships. Even though I had six colonies all pouring... Uh, like probably 75% of their industry into building ships and was just constantly sending them there. Their one system was able to produce more and better ships that I, and I just kept losing. I ended up losing the war, uh, even though it was six colonies versus one. And so that's kind of what I mean, that, that the Horatio just can't fight. They're just too weak, um, which, which kind of sucks. All right, so we're gonna send out some probes, see if there's anyone of interest over here. Set up this blockade. Hopefully he comes here and then kind of turns around. Um, we'll see. All right, and I think that's gonna be the end of turn. Another point check-in, uh, 145. So we are still in second last. I don't know who yellow is, but they are getting absolutely dumped on probably by the pink cravers. Yeah, I'm guessing they're, they're getting dumped on by the pink cravers. All right, so this guy somehow turned back. Did I just miss that uh, that he reached there and turned back already? 
Um, so we might be able to get there in time. So when we end our turn and, and get to turn 30, we're just going to be mashing this fleet move button. And hopefully we can move here and set up our blockade before he comes and then we'll be able to assimilate Yassel. Which is going to lose us 50 dust and 60 science per turn. So I'm actually not sure if it's if I want to do that. Because let's look. So 50 dust is about, it, it's as much as our civilization itself is producing. And science, 60 science, is about a fourth, a little bit more than a fourth of what our, of our, of our total science production. So by assimilating that minor sieve, we're basically cutting our production, our FIDS production, our dust and science production by 30% or yeah, but probably about 30%. So I actually don't want to capture this guy. I'm going to let him just kind of roam around and do his thing for a while. Um, cause I need that dust and that science, unfortunately. Uh, that's just kind of the way of things. I mean, that's even with, uh, getting a nice second place, which we'll be finishing. It's, uh, it's public private partnerships now. Yeah. So I'm actively not going to capture this guy. All right, so we finished multi-threat management, which means we've unlocked tier two modernization. Uh, now we are going to go for our bigger fleets because we want, we're gonna have to fight those uh, those Horatio. What did we not get? Oh, those things, that's not gonna go. Cool. Wow, that's a lot of things. Um, and then after that, so yeah, so um, one thing that I am going, so I'm also preparing a, uh, a breakdown and a, a series of videos about the battle system. Everything from the actual mechanics of the battle system to ship design, to fleet compositions, to um, experience, like specifically ship experience. Uh, and I'm gonna just comment on this real quick. Uh, the 40 initial XP on fleets um, means that each ship that you build in that system gets 40 ship experience. And if I pull up a ship like this, you can see where it says experience, zero to 20, rookie. And so what it means is that it's gonna start as a rookie two. And each level that it, the ship gets, it gets bonus health and bonus damage. Uh, and it's pretty huge. Like I think rookie two is like a 10% or 15% uh, health, health bonus, and I think a 5% damage bonus. Um, so it's really big. And the, the building itself is like 160, industry so it's super cheap whenever you're going to build ships build that thing first because it's just going to make it's just a straight up buff to your ships forever and it's super cheap there's no reason not to do it and uh if you compare it to the other level one military tree i mean you get chain gang uh chain gang and industrial uh, impervious bunkers which is 150 capacity no big deal um you're probably going to want to get this stuff anyways which is just better and gives you not only 250 capacity, but also other stuff. Um, so, so this is really not that big of a deal. You can get it later in the game if you want to get the, these impervious bunkers uh, later, but definitely skip it for now. You're going to want the uh, extra manpower and more importantly, the big data shipyard tech early on. Um, okay, so this is nice. This is going to give us uh, plus 15 industry on each of our systems just from that quest. And yep, so we're actively not going to uh, capture it, even though it's already turned around. Um, so there's not really much for this guy left to do. Let's see, so we can't get through there. I think I'm just gonna go sit on this place to make sure that the Riftborn don't come up and colonize it, because that's kind of where I want to go next. Um, yeah, we can keep praising these guys. We're going to wait for this praise to expire because you can see it's 70 influence now. Um, but if we wait for this to expire, it should go down to 25. Um, but other than that, you can kind of see, uh, the way that the Horatio work. Um, so yeah, uh, that's going to be the end of that turn, I think, right? Yep. So that's going to be the end of that turn. Uh, and with that, I'm going to just kind of wrap up my turns one through 30 uh, Horatio expert guide. Uh, if you guys have any questions, definitely hit me up in the comments. Um, 
and I'll try and uh, answer any of those I can. As a side note, uh, my brother and I are actually getting pretty close to wrapping up this uh, series of the expert guides. I think we only have Unfallen and technically Voidiani left. Um, James is working on the Unfallen one right now. And then instead of doing an actual expert guide for Voidiani, I think we're just going to talk about why they should never be in any game ever. Uh, because they're just hor so horribly designed. Uh, just I don't know what the game designers were thinking or if they ever tested them once, but the Voidiani are broken in every possible way. Which is unfortunate because they're kind of the coolest. Like, I love them. Their art is amazing. Their concept is amazing. The ship thing is super, super cool, but just so poorly executed that um, we're just going to make a video kind of demonstrating their core mechanics, but then also explaining why they're so broken and why... Uh, I mean, as you can see, that if you've watched any of our other videos, we don't even allow AIs to play them. We're banned. We don't let each other play them. And then if you also can't select their heroes, uh, because their heroes are also probably the most broken thing in the game um, so, uh, since this most recent patch. Um, so yeah, uh, we're going to be finishing that up pretty soon. Probably not this week, but next week. Um, and then after that, we're going to be doing a Reddit AMA uh, to kind of get all of the questions that you guys have together. We have, we've had a hugely amazing um, response from the Reddit community and the YouTube community. So we're just going to kind of get it all together. We're going to go onto Reddit, do an AMA, and uh, you guys can field any additional questions you have there. Um, and yeah, and we'll get that date out to you guys um, as soon as possible but keep an eye out for it, and uh, I hope to see you guys next time. Take it easy.